Thanks, thanks very much for that intro and, and thanks very much for having me. Um, I'm pretty happy to be looking down on some people actually because I'm usually like this and uh, up at me mates that are six foot four um, back at home so it's not bad being up here. All being a little bit nervous. Um, I just got, um, get to my slides. Yeah, I, I, I coach, um, coach senior grade football down in Aussie Rules Football. Don't, don't hold me uh, that against me, uh, Sydney Siders. But uh, I coach senior grade football and I was just thinking about leadership traits or, of modern changes. And the leaders that I really love are the ones that are by action. Um, and I think you can only then provide the best possible action if, if you're feeling really good yourself and you're in a good headspace. Um, so if you're stressed to this point, are you going to be making rational decisions that uh, are good for you know, change? Um, so in terms of my presentation, I want to pass on some messages around just being the best versions of ourselves, no matter the circumstances. And, and then provide some perspective on, on diversity through, through my own story. And this, it's, not a, it's not a poor me story either. I live, a, I live an awesome life. And I live, yeah, such a good life. And it's not someone up in a wheelchair saying, yeah, you got nothing to complain about, look at me, I'm in a wheelchair. I, honestly, um, I sometimes think it's a little bit easier for me because you can actually see that I may face some challenges where... You know, I might not be able to see the challenges that you face in your life. All right, so um, early years, um, I grew up down Phillip Island, down uh, South Victoria, and I was a pretty normal knockabout young bloke. I was okay at school, but I just loved getting outdoors and, and doing as much as I could. Um, I won a few state medals in athletics, played representative basketball, went surfing, all the time and loved every, every single sport pretty much. Um, my major passion was Aussie Rules football. Uh, Dad played about 20 AFL games at Richmond and, and Sydney. And my dream going up was to be an AFL footballer. And everything was looking up in those terms of young style, won multiple club and, and league best and fairest. Uh, I played in the elite under 18 competition. I won a, won a premiership there for Gippsland Power. Uh, one of my teammates was Scott Pendlebury. Uh, who's now Collingwood captain, uh, and I ended up training at Collingwood and Richmond, uh, and due to a few injuries and a few different things, uh, things didn't go my way, I missed out on being drafted. And fast forward, 23 years of age, playing football for Lane Gather in the Gippsland Footy League, I hadn't had my best year of footy, I would won the last two senior bests and fairest, but yeah, this year hadn't gone my way to date, and on this day in June, I could feel my form changing, and uh, we're winning. Uh, a mate handballed me the ball. I was a little bit too far out in front, and as I've gone down to pick it up, uh, someone running the other way is, is hip and shoulder me straight on top of the head. And yeah, that moment was yeah very scary. I was fully conscious. Um, I was laying on my back and, and couldn't move anything in my body. Um, I yelled out to my brother who was playing with us and my, and my teammates uh, not to touch me because I thought I'd broken my neck. Uh, and then the trainers came over and, and touched my legs and touched my arms and I couldn't feel anything in those areas. And in an instant, uh, my life changed, changed forever. And that half an hour was, yeah, it was so scary, waiting to be boarded into an ambulance and then helicoptered to Melbourne uh, where I was operated on. I didn't actually break my neck, I, I dislocated it, so um, I had to put it back into place and, and take some bone from my hip and, and put, you know, plate and screws in there and sort of put it all back together and, and that was when I was diagnosed a quadriplegic. Um, so in terms of that, me and my family thought quadriplegic, we you know, thought I wasn't going to be able to move my arms or legs, you know, that initial thought, we thought that's what a quadriplegic was. Um, it's not necessarily true. A quadriplegic just means there's different levels of quadriplegia and just means that four limbs are affected. So in terms of my injury, I've got no movement from, from my chest down. I can't contract any of those muscles. Um, I can't move my fingers one little bit, so my fingers don't move at all. Uh, my tricep muscle here um, has got you know, a few percent probably muscle. I can go that way, but I can't go up against gravity. 
uh, in my forearms. I can bring my wrist that way, um, but I can't go up that way. And in my chest, I've got a little muscle across the top, but the major muscle itself doesn't work. So essentially what I do have working is my bicep muscles, my shoulder muscles, and my neck muscles, and, and that's about it. And then in terms of sensation, if I hold my hands out like this and you draw a line from my second finger, a straight line across my body to that second finger, everything above that I feel normally and everything below, that's just a numb sensation. So I can't feel hot or cold, um, I can't feel my skin and can't feel pain, which isn't too bad when I whack my elbow pretty hard and don't feel a thing, it's happy, happy days there. Um, I'll quickly tell you a story actually and Sydney is a very hilly joint, I'll tell you, far out. Uh, but when, it, when it's raining, my hands aren't my brakes, so to break my wheelchair, I've got to like push my palms down on, on my wheels to slow it down. And uh, when it's raining, my hands like slide on my wheels and do next to nothing. And I was at this train station up Melbourne, and it had been pouring rain, my hands were wet, my wheels were wet. And I was looking at this ramp, I had to go down, I'm going, far out, I'm pretty scared to go down here right now. And... Uh, Oh, I said, oh, harden up, but you'll be right, you'll be right. And I uh, got about a metre down, and I started losing control of my wheelchair. And yes, once you start losing control, it's then harder and harder and harder to, to gain it back. So I'm down the bottom of this ramp going the quickest I've ever gone in my life, I reckon. And um, there was a fair runoff afterwards, and I'm thinking, oh, I might be right here, might be right. And then my chair just started going like a little bit to the left. And on the left, there was one pole there, and that's it. And I'm headed straight for it. And... Um, a few metres from it, I, I, you know, I knew where it was going and uh, I collided into that pole so hard and after I hit it, I'm like, oh, that's all right, I can't feel my legs anyway. So, uh, so it's not too bad not being able to feel a fair chunk of my body when I do some stupid stuff like that. Um, I, uh, so I was in an induced coma for a week after my injury. I came to, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't talk. Um, I couldn't breathe, so that blue tubing was going into my neck and breathing for me, uh, and I couldn't eat any food. For three weeks, I was unable to do those things, and you, know, you never realise how much you love talking and, and eating until you know, I was unable to do it for that amount of time. And um, I remember the first time I was able to eat, I couldn't really move my arms at all at this stage, so I needed a nurse to feed me. And uh, um, if I worried about me choking, if I was able to swallow some ice cream, I was then able to have some peaches and the um, nurse feed me the ice cream, um, end of the bed, dad picks up the bowl of peaches, brings them up to his mouth and, and pretended to start eating them. I swear my legs nearly started working. I wanted to go over there and clobber him to the ground and, and get him off him. Um, so in hospital, I spent eight months in hospital uh, post-injury. Um, you know, we had lockdowns and whatnot over the last couple of years. I sort of relate back to being in hospital for, for eight months and, and not loving being there but knowing it was the best thing for me. Um, I was in intensive care for five weeks. Then I, got sh uh, then I got taken to a rehabilitation centre where I lived for seven months. And I got shown around the facilities. I got back to my, back to my room and, and that was when a massive amount of reality just hit me in the face. I, I started crying um, uncontrollably. Uh, I sat there. I physically couldn't, you know, mobile phone, t turn on the TV, um, laptop, I couldn't itch my face, I couldn't turn the pages of a book, I couldn't feed myself, I couldn't go to the toilet by myself and here I was at 23 years of age thinking I should be in the absolute prime of my life right now and I'm sitting here and I, I can't do absolutely anything. Um, never have I been so far from where I thought I should be. And right then and there was, you know, all these, the negative biases and all the negative thoughts going into my mind of, you know, I thought I was less of a person because of my injury. Um, you know, why, why me? I thought, what's the point of living if this is what my life is going to be? Um, and as tough as a moment as that was, and it was a really tough moment, I feel like it was a really good moment for myself because it made me go, all right, this has happened. I can't change that. Um, but I have control of what happens from here. And I suppose, um, speaking to Sonia's point about those negative biases, it's like, I was, yeah, we're trained to think that you are a less of a person because of, because of that. And I was, yeah, my partner, Lucy, I've been with, at that stage, I'd been with her since 15, so 23 years of age, been together eight years, I'm like, well, you know, why would she want to be with someone like me? 
um, in this situation. And um, I quite often get, oh, your wife's an amazing woman. And I was like, I think, yes, she is an amazing woman, but you're saying that based on her being with me. And I'm like, I'm a far better person now um, being in this wheelchair uh, and, and what, what we've gone through than what I was beforehand. Um, so I just wanted to... Here we go. Everyone feel awkward? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say that about that negative bias. It's not... It's just natural that our mind goes, goes to that um, situation. And I'm not having to go at anyone. I've been on both sides of the um, ledger with it. But, um, yeah, it's just one of those points with it. So, um, uh, I want to bring us to this next slide, which I'm hoping that goes to. I hope I haven't turned it off. Um, how can you look at a situation and be the change you want to want to see? Um, so, how do you, how do you want to look at a situation that's going on in your life? It might be, you know, you're seeing something in the world, and you like, all right, I want to do something about that. Or it might be someone. Um, you might want to be more diverse and, and inclusive. Uh, how, how do we do that? Um, you might be going through a tough situation um, and how, how can we best adapt to that situation? So up here I've got this model. As I mentioned, you can only be the best leader and the best change maker by being the best version of yourself. And on the surface, we all look, I've got no doubt, we all look like we've got our shit together. Uh, but deep down, people have own issues, whether it be social anxiety, maybe anxieties around different things, like stress, uh, feeling a bit flat, maybe something going on in our life. And I just think we neglect our mind too much to be the best version of ourselves. And our mind is our most powerful thing. So up here, I've got helpful mindset deliberately because um, in every situation, you can go, all right, what can I do right now that's going to help me help others going forward? Um, and I've deliberately got that instead of positive. Um, but up there, we've got an event or situation. That could be anything at all. Then we've got our thoughts around that event or situation. Then we've got our emotions. And then we've got an outcome. Now, quite often, we think an event or situation makes us feel a certain way. So, hypothetically, or if um, you got up here and, and spoke in, in front of you know, a large audience, that makes me scared. Um, that might be true but it might, it's our thoughts around that event or situation that makes us feel scared and then leads to an outcome. Now, I'm just going to explain this on my front and then I'm going to relate it back to yourselves and then also diversity, equity and inclusion. So, at the top there, my event or situation was a spinal cord injury on a large scale. My thoughts automatically go to that negative side. Uh, why me? thought I was less of a person. What's the point of living? If I continue to think like that, on an ongoing basis, my, th uh, my emotions are going to be you know, angry, sad, frustrated, jealous, unmotivated, uh, unworthy, and it's just going to lead to a less positive outcome. Go back to the start, venal sp is a spinal cord injury. Um, thoughts automatically go to that negative side. I see that as normal. That's pretty normal. Yeah? But then we have a choice to try and challenge those thoughts into more helpful uh, helpful thoughts. So I can do this. I'm going to prove nurses wrong with what I can achieve. Um, they told me that you know, no one on my level of injury had ever gone home independently um, you know, post rehab, um, which made me was one of my goals. Um, and I was out to prove them wrong. Um, I've got a great family, great friends. I'm 23 with the rest of my life to live. I've got a fully functioning mind. I live in Australia with so many opportunities. And by thinking these thoughts, one other one was actually, yes, it is tough right now, but it'll get easier. By thinking these thoughts, I wasn't angry at all. I was definitely sad at times, but I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I was happier more often than I wasn't, and I was motivated and determined to make the most of my life, which I feel has led to more positive outcome. Now, if we, if we are going to live one life, all of us are going to live one life, I know which way we want to go more often than not. And, I, you know, we have 20 to 50,000 thoughts a day, and on average, 80% of those thoughts are negative. All right, so that might be, all right, 
um, diversity, equity, and inclusion? How do we make our organisation, how do I have, and our thoughts might go down to that negative side to start off with, it's too hard. Or what am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm, I don't have you know, as big an influence. All right? And then that leads to outcomes. All right? But if we challenge these thoughts into more helpful thoughts, we lead to more uh, better emotions and po more positive outcomes. Okay? It might be even just yourself. All right? Um, stress. You've got someone at work that's making you, your time there stressed. All right? And your thoughts go to that negative side. All right? That's normal to have these thoughts. Oh, but it doesn't help us to stay in that, in that thought pattern. And I'm just um, putting it out there to just ask yourself the question, what are my thoughts that I'm having? Don't get too caught up on it. Be aware of it um, and challenge those thoughts into more helpful thoughts. Um, and with that, it's going to make you um, feel better. It's going to lead to more positive outcomes. It's going to allow you to be the person you want to be. And it's going to also help with, um, you know, our unconscious biases and, and, and the purpose of today, the diversity, equity and inclusion of, of being more inclusive. Does that make sense? I'm just, I'm so passionate about this because one in four people will suffer from an anxiety condition in their life, one in six from depression and eight Australians every day take their own lives. And I'm so passionate about it because it, this, just challenging those negative thoughts really, really help with those sort of things. And then if you're feeling good, then you can go, all right, I'm making good decisions. I'm seeing the world really well. I'm, I'm going, all right, people you know, with a disability, people from, you know, um, uh, LGBT plus community or whatever it may be, and I'm being more inclusive. I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm doing things to be the person I want to be. Um, it all started for me, actually, this... I was down the beach um, with my wife, two women from my wife's mother's group. They had, they each, and their husbands, and they had a kid each. I'm down there in the beach in my electric chair, and I found myself getting a little bit emotional on the beach going, everyone was out in the water. And I was looking at the dads going, they were throwing their kids up in the air, throwing their kids over the shoulder, and I was just going far out. I wish I'd go out there and, and do those things. I wish I could throw my daughter up in the air. I wish I could throw over my shoulder. I wish I could swim around without the fear of drowning at the time. I wish I could have given my wife more of a chop out and taken that kid off her hands. And I just caught those thoughts as they were coming in. I said, Bo, these thoughts aren't helping you one little bit. And I looked at the things I did have and I'm going, how lucky are you to have a happy and healthy relationship, a uh, happy and healthy one-year-old daughter? How lucky are you to have a happy, uh, loving relationship with your wife? How lucky are you to have access to some funding to be able to get an electric chair to get down to the beautiful beach I was at. And you can see how you look at it that negative way and I don't hate myself for thinking like that. But then I look at it on the counter, I go, far out, but you got it pretty good. So everyone here, everyone here deserves to have a whinge. You deserve to have a whinge, get stuff off your chest. It just doesn't help us to stay there for, for too long. Just like you can find a positive out of every situation. Um, and I think that's a good mantra to live by. All right, and I just got this one as well, your plan versus reality. Um, I love this photo. I think it's a good one just to have in the back of our mind. Um, that is every single person's reality, ups and downs. That might even be your reality on, on your path to being more inclusive. You might fail all right, at different times. You might... Uh, make a mistake. Always think for myself being in, in a wheelchair and other people with a disability, beforehand I would have shied away from um, even communicating with someone with a disability in fear I was going to do the right, uh, wrong thing. And I'm, I'm up here now saying that is far worse than actually putting yourself out there to um, make a mistake potentially and being more inclusive and learning from that and then growing from that. So this model here, the bottom one, look at the size of the bike in both of them and look where, where they get to. The, the bottom one you know, gets, raises a, a lot more. They get a lot higher. So when you face those adversities, when you face those challenges, when you fail at things in life, you grow from those experiences. It makes you a stronger, more uh, better person going forward. 
And with those mental health numbers I mentioned before, I love that bottom photo just because every time you go down, you come back up. All right? And sometimes it might not feel like that. So just in terms of um, my disability now, as I said, those unconscious biases to start off with, I'm now very proud of, of the person uh, with a disability um, that, I, that I am. I did go home independently without anyone helping me you know, get up in the morning, go to bed at night and, and do everything myself. I've come up here to Sydney um, from Melbourne by myself. Uh, I've married my partner, Lucy. Uh, we've got three kids now. Uh, I drive a car. I, um, I'm still heavily involved in my sport. Last year, I won the national championships for hand cycling. I, um, I kayak. Got some straps made up for my balance for a kayak. I've got some handles made up for the paddle. I'm able to kayak, take the paddle off, put a glove on my forearm, put a fishing rod in. I'm able to cast out and use my palm to reel in some squid and some whiting. I, um, I play a bit of wheelchair, um, wheelchair rugby. I don't know if you've seen that at all, but yeah, you should YouTube it if you haven't. Uh, it's good fun. You need to get this ball over the try line, but I think that comes second to try and hit each other out of the chair. <laughs> Um, when my hand is down like that, my thumb and index finger are separated. Um, when my wrist is back, they're slightly together. It's not my fingers moving, it's just the angle of my wrist. Um, so with that, I'm able to get like the slightest of grips and I'm able to hold this um, dart and, and throw a dart and um, open up that grip as I do it. And I don't know how I do it, but first time I did it, I was at mum and dad's joint and um, I went like right angles, nearly hit mum in the living area. Uh, I got better and better. I ended up playing my brother at a game of 501. Um, and yeah, you just need 501 points and, and whatnot. I beat him at that and I never let him live that down. Uh, he lose someone at darts, can't move their fingers. And yeah, anyway, no good. Uh, when, I, when I got out of um, rehab though, yeah, and, and as well, I do boxing and, and gym work and, and all different um, sports, but when I got out of rehab, I was um, I was very lost, lonely. Um, in terms of everyone was working, I couldn't go back to my previous line of work as a tradie. Um, I had no confidence. I was scared, and yeah, it was just that was a hard moment. And I remember back to when I was 18 years of age. This bloke come spoke to us, and I remember one thing he said. He drew up a circle the size of my fist. He said, "That's your comfort zone." He drew up a circle around it and said, that's outside your comfort zone. He said, the more times you step from inside there to outside there, the better off you'll be. Um, and it rang true to me at that point. And I, I was literally, it's, it's pretty amazing to think now, but I was literally so scared to go for a push around the block by myself. And I just thought, Bo, the more times you step outside your comfort zone, the better off you'll be. And I, I went for that push around the block, gave me a little bit of confidence amongst a number of other things. And... I thought, well, I've got to start using my mind now. Um, so I applied for university, uh, and my mind told me all the reasons, all those negative thoughts why I shouldn't do it. You know, how are you going to write? You can't hold a pen. How are you going to get there? I didn't have my license at the time. How are people going to perceive me in my new situation? And I just thought, Bo, the more times you step outside, you come to the zone, the better off you'll be. And I went to uni, um, gained more confidence, and then I, I went to seek some employment. And um, at, the, at the AFL, I applied for a job. And I'm so thankful for the person that, you know, I suppose I say took a chance on me, but I don't know if that's the right, I, I reckon I was the right person for the, for the job. And, but there was all negative thoughts in my mind. And that, by that person taking that chance on me, I feel like personally, I now have flourished in life and, and live a really good life. And just by that person, give me a chance and give me an opportunity. Um, it's made my family's life better. Um, it's allowed me to have kids, allowed me to do the work I do now. Um, I felt like it made the organisation better for having me in it. Um, it made us more connected, it made a more positive culture. I rocked up with work to work with a massive smile on my face every single day because I was just thankful for the opportunity to have work. Um, so right now I'm just encouraging you. you know, I think the best way to break down barriers and, and minority groups is to be more inclusive and to be exposed to that and it makes us better people 
for being exposed to it. And I've got no doubt I am a better person now for having my disability, for having to, yeah, me meeting more people and being more inclusive with, with other people and understanding of other people's situations. Um, and always relate employment of someone with a disability back to um, football, that if you've got someone that, um, you know, uh, is the best forward, let's say, he's the best forward, um, but he doesn't make the people around him better, is he really the best forward? Now, someone with a, best, uh, with a disability might not be the best at absolutely everything, but if they make people around them better, then I reckon they're the best person for the job. Um, so just in terms of that, yeah, I got a job at the AFL and then, and then um, I went down and I went to my local footy club. Uh, they weren't going very well. Uh, I went home that night, the last game of the year, and, and said to my wife, thinking about applying for the senior coaching job of Langapha Footy Club. She was fully supportive. Um, fair process, fair uh, doubt on myself whether I'm actually right to do that. Um, eventually got the job. And in three years coaching Lane Gaffer, we made three grand finals uh, and lost the first two and then, and then won the third one. At the end of that year, I resigned from Lane Gaffer Footy Club as head coach of the seniors and, and took on um, Philip Island coaching job where I live, where my, um, I'm entrenched in the community and, um, and yeah, where I um, Yeah, where it's just easier with my second kid was on the way. So... I um, took on the job there, and in two years coaching there, we managed to go back-to-back -back premiers, um, and it's first time in the club's 90-year history uh, we've ever done that. So, um, and then the last two years have been ruined by COVID, and I'm still coaching Phillip Island. So, um, this is a photo uh, winning the national champs hand cycling. Uh, a couple of photos coaching. Um, able to surf as well. Still, I've got a Bluetooth surfboard that. Um, Got some two propellers under it. I hit the watch. I've got a watch I wear. I hit the watch with my teeth. Um, it powers the surfboard on. I'm able to get on some waves. Also, um, able to play some golf. So, I have a, a glove made up where I can slide a club in and out um, and able to swing the club. Um, it's just a visual of that comfort zone. And, like, that was a benefit for me. But I think with. Um, yeah, you know, one in four people suffer from anxiety, and obviously that is for a range of different reasons. But the more times you step outside your comfort zone, the better off you'll be, and then the larger that inside circle becomes. And, and that could be anything at all. Like, so many people deep down have self-doubt on themselves. They talk about those 80% negative thoughts before. A lot of the time, that's, that's negative talk about ourselves. So with that, just believe in yourself, continue to face your fears and, and, and step outside your comfort zone and be the change that you want to be um, and that you want to see and the better off you'll be in the long run. Um, just the last point I had is to see people's strengths, not weaknesses. Um, just think, yeah, like it's too easy if someone walks in the door and they're something, um, they're different to us. It's easy to judge and easy to maybe see something that's wrong. And I just really want to encourage everyone here to see people's strengths and not their weaknesses because it frustrates me so much that person on the left pre-injury is more likely to be employed, is more likely to be in relationships, more likely to be included. But the bloke on the right, not that I was a bad person beforehand, but that person on the right is a far better person than the one on the left. Far more capable. You know, he might not be able to cut his food as well. Um, but, you know, he is far more capable and more a, and a better person than the one on the left. So I'd really just encourage everyone here to see people's strengths rather than weaknesses. So just takeaways. Um, major focuses um, on how to be a leader in bringing about the change you want to see. Helpful mindset. Um, so just be aware of your thoughts and emotions. Catch your thoughts. So as, as they come in, your negative thoughts as they come in, and just go, all right, 
just be aware, catch them, don't get too caught up on them, don't hate them too much, just be aware of them. Um, everyone deserves to have a whinge, work stressed, if things aren't going well, you know, COVID, lockdown, you deserve to have a whinge, it doesn't help us to stay there for too long. Um, focus on what you can control rather than the things you can't. Uh, all emotions are normal, I don't hate them, so it's perfectly normal to feel stressed and anxious and, and different things at times. That is normal. Don't hate them, but just get back to your thoughts and, and challenge them. Um, life is filled with ups and downs. Um, expect it and we grow from those. You can find a positive out of it every situation and train your brain. Um, it's the most powerful thing you have. Um, so with that, I mentioned about stepping outside our comfort zone, particularly with our diversity and inclusion. See people's strengths, not weaknesses. And you are a changer. We are far more capable than we give ourselves credit for. You are capable. And it might be a minute thing that you are capable of changing, but that minute thing might have a huge ripple effect that has massive um, positive outcomes for many people. All right. I, I always wonder if someone rang me when I was 18, 19 years of age, and said, Bo, in the future, you have your biceps are worked, your shoulder muscles and neck muscles. And I closed my eyes and I, and I tried visualising that person. There's no way that I think that person could be happy. There's no way that I think that that person uh, can do the things that I can do. And it's not that I'm extraordinary, it's just that you're thrown in a situation and you learn you're far more capable than you give yourself credit for. So everyone out there today, you, know, you are capable of making a difference. You are capable of, um, you know, and it might be to one person's life. At least you go to bed that night feeling, feeling bloody good about yourself uh, and what you're doing. Thank you.